an easy peace, not an insignificant peace, not a half-hearted peace, but the peace of God in Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Good morning and welcome to the Benefice Eucharist for the parishes of Laban and Bellaby. This morning we hear from scripture how God calls us and how Jesus called his disciples, Philip and Nathaniel. During this service, based on liturgy from the Iona community, let us take time to stop and listen to God's call to each one of us. This service is pre-recorded because of the need to suspend physical worship in our churches. We continue to pray for all those affected by the coronavirus pandemic, the extremely high rates of infection and the impact this is having on the lives of so many people, particularly those working in our health services. We remember all members of our church communities those who usually worship in our churches and are unable to, and those who are part of our online community. God is calling us. Let us open our hearts and say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. We light this candle to remind us of each other and that even though we are a dispersed community, we are drawn together by our Lord and Saviour, who is the light of the world. Thanks be to you, O God, that we have risen this day to the rising of this life itself. Be the purpose of God between us and each purpose, the hand of God between us and each hand, the pain of Christ between us and each pain, the love of Christ between us and each love. O God, who brought us to the bright light of this new day, bring us to the guiding light of eternity. We gather in God's name. We claim Christ's promised presence. My brothers and sisters, not out of dread and fear, but believing that God is faithful to forgive, let us rid ourselves of what we need to carry no longer. Eternal God, maker of the skies above, Lowly Christ, born amidst the growing earth, Spirit of life, wind over the flowing waters, in earth and sky you are there. O hidden mystery, sun behind all suns, soul behind all souls, in everything we touch, in everyone we meet, your presence is around us and we give you thanks. But when we have not touched but trampled you in creation, when we have not met but missed you in one another, when we have not received but rejected you in the poor, forgive us and hear now our plea for mercy. Amen. Hear now the words of Jesus for all who are truly sorry and seek to renew their lives. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. Come and follow me. Lead us now, O God, to acknowledge your costly generosity by living as forgiven people until heaven and earth rejoice and the whole earth cries glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves for the word of God 
as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scriptures. Our hearts and minds are open. The Collect and readings for the second Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Alison and Carol will now read our Old and New Testament readings. A reading from the book of Samuel, Samuel chapter 3. Two, 1 Samuel chapter 3. Samuel's calling and prophetic activity. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. New Testament reading is taken from Revelation chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or look into it. And I wept much that no one was worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, Weep not, lo, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and with golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy art thou to take the scroll and to open its seals, for thou wast slain, and by thy blood didst the ransom men for God. From every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and hast made them a kingdom and priest to our God, and they shall reign on earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. 
Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him who, about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of jo Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Through the written word and the spoken word, may we know your living word, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. The beginning of 2021 has certainly been eventful. It has not started quietly. It feels as if there is so much going on around us and the clamour of the world seems to get louder and louder as the days go on. The bad news about COVID-19 and the number of deaths. The arguments about restrictions and who is doing what or not doing this or that. The invasion of the Capitol building in Washington DC the outgoing president and impeachment, the worries about the inauguration of the new president, the quality of food being given to the most needy in our society, snow. This is to name but a few, but the noise of all this can be overwhelming in our lives and can stop us from hearing God's call, never more so than at this time. I strongly believe that this is what we need to hear right now. We need to spend time in God's presence, hear his loving voice calling to us. What we need at this time is to stop and listen, saying to him in our prayers, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening, to shut out the noise of the outside world and really listen to what God is saying to us. Our Old Testament reading, the story of Eli and Samuel, has a remarkable resonance with our life today. The passage begins by telling us, The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. Doesn't that sound familiar? And could apply to our world today? The leadership in Israel at the time is corrupt. Eli's sons have been using their status to satisfy their own desires. Into this situation, some sort of judgment is on the way. So, who will speak truth to power? Who is willing to stand up and give voice to what God is saying? Into this situation comes Samuel, asleep in the temple, hearing the voice of God saying to him, Samuel, Samuel. He hears God calling but doesn't recognise him until Eli encourages him to really hear what is being said. To stop and say, speak Lord for your servant is listening. In this moment, human speaking and hearing become one of the main means by which the light of God's revelation breaks into the world. Our world today needs to hear the word of God, to follow in his footsteps, and his kingdom needs building here at this time and in this place. But to be able to hear God calling, 
We have to open our ears and our hearts to enable it to happen. But so often the noise of the world gets in the way. Being able to hear God's call to us is also reflected in our Gospel reading, part of the story of the calling of the disciples. John focuses in this passage on how Philip and Nathaniel come to follow Jesus, what is said to them and what they hear. Philip hears the words, follow me, and obediently does as he is told without question. Nathaniel then hears about Jesus from Philip, who excitedly tells him about Jesus. But Nathaniel doesn't hear what he is being told. He responds by exclaiming, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? This sounds so typical and sounds so like human nature. Something good happens and then something negative is said. Don't we hear this all the time in our newspapers and on our televisions at the moment? Or even worse, we don't even hear the positive things that are happening, we just hear the negative. Yes, there are many things happening in our world that are difficult and challenging like all of those things that I highlighted at the beginning of this sermon. But there are also many good things happening in our world and in our community at the moment. It would be so good to hear some of the positive things that are happening. I spent an afternoon last week stewarding at tenants for the vaccination centre. It was so good, so positive and so affirming to see people coming to be protected against this virus by the amazing vaccine that scientists have been working on. And so good to see all those working and volunteering to make it happen. The smiles on people's faces as they came out certainly made me feel so much better. If we look, if we listen, we can see and hear so many good things instead of concentrating on all that is negative. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? This is what Nathaniel does. Having been disparaging and scoffed about Nazareth, he builds up the courage to go and see this Jesus face to face. When he gets there, he hears Jesus speaking directly to him and then follows him, recognising Jesus for who he is. Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. As soon as he listened, he recognised who Jesus is and is told he will see greater things. His discipleship starts with this recognition. Listen, hear and follow. Discipleship is a willingness to walk with Jesus through good times and through bad. As we follow Jesus, we learn who he is and as we learn more about who he is, we learn a lot more about what it means to follow him. To do this, we have to listen and we have to hear what God is saying. Spending time in God's presence, in prayer, reading scripture, staring at the snow falling, admiring a view on our daily exercise. We all need to hear God saying to each one of us, follow me. Come and see. All we need to do is to say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Listen, hear and follow. My prayer for all of us is that we can make the time, particularly during this lockdown, to stop and hear God's call, to make the time and the space to put aside the noise of the world, to enable us to hear. If we hear that call, God does something beautiful with our lives. God makes us whole. We need to open our hearts to enable God to build his kingdom here amongst us. He calls you to follow him. 
so that you may do something beautiful with your life and bear much fruit. The world needs you. The church needs you. Jesus needs you. They need your love and your light. There is a hidden place in your heart where Jesus lives. This is a deep secret you are called to live. Let Jesus live in you. Go forward with him. Amen. Let us pray. At this time there are so many things to pray about that I am lost for words. So thank you Lord that you know what we need to pray for. Thank you that you know what is in our minds and we can trust you with everything. We thank you that all of our lives are safely in your hands. We thank you that we can put our concerns to you and even before we have thought them you have answered. So we now express our concerns knowing that you will address them. We are concerned about the worldwide news we watch on our televisions and thank you that you protect us from all the evils that surround us. We are concerned about the spread of COVID-19 and pray that we may all act to reduce the spread of, its, of this disease. We are concerned that those caring for everyone suffering from COVID are exhausted, tired and in need of a rest. Lord, give them strength that they may rise up on eagles' wings. We are concerned about the health and mental well-being of everyone locked down at home and unable to get out and meet people. We are concerned about our schools, the pupils working from home and those with inadequate food. We pray for the teachers and staff and the children who attend our schools and we pray for those helping with food. We are concerned about the weather and pray for those who have to drive in these snowy conditions, especially ambulance drivers, other emergency responders and delivery drivers. We are concerned about our families, their safety and their health. We are concerned about the overwork of our local clergy as they respond to the needs of families suffering loss, as they take funerals and as they have more work to do leading services online. We are concerned about the loss of income of our diocese and pray that you will make us generous. This week we are especially concerned about our lack of Christian unity. Make us one Lord as you are one. But there is almost also so much to thank you for Lord and we thank you for the vaccination programme and pray for all those who are working on research and manufacture for those stewarding, those injecting, those involved in the logistics, give them strength. We thank you for the generosity of those who gave food parcels and shoeboxes over Christmas. Thank you, Father. We thank you for Stephen and Vincent as they work to bring our services to everyone online. And we thank you that you, Father, are here and hear us when we call on you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
The table of bread and wine is now made ready. So come to this table, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often, and you who have not been for a while. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who are weary of trying. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Let us pray. Loving God, through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May we know your presence in the sharing of this bread, so that we may know your touch in all bread, all matter. We celebrate the life that Jesus has shared among his community through the centuries and shares with us now. Made one in Christ and one with each other, we offer these gifts and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We offer you praise, dear God, and hearts lifted high. For in the communion of our love, Christ comes close to us and we come close to Christ. Therefore, with the whole realm of nature around us, with earth, sea and sky, we sing to you. With the angels of light we envelop you. With all the saints before and beside us, with brothers and sisters, east and west, we sing to you. And with our loved ones separated from us now, who yet in this mystery are close to us, we join in the song of your unending greatness. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is our brother Jesus who walks with us the road of our world's suffering and who is known to us in the breaking of bread. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread and having blessed it, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given to you. In the same way, he took wine and having given thanks for it, he poured it out and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new relationship with God, sealed with my blood. Take this and share it. Hear us, O Christ, and breathe your spirit upon us and upon this bread and wine. May they become for us your body vibrant with your life, healing, renewing and making us whole. And as the bread and wine which we now eat and drink are changed into us, may we be changed again into you, bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh, loving and caring in the world. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, 
for ever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ keep us in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep us in eternal life.
Let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus for ever and ever. Amen. And so now we hear and receive God's blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you and all those you love and pray for, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.